YouTube, Dave here again. I just wanted to make a quick video discussing sort of my thoughts on the upcoming changes to D&D Adventures League rules, and ultimately why I've decided to discontinue running Adventures League myself. So, for anyone who's not aware, I think it starts uh, in September, September 1st. Um, the, the system that they're going to use are going to be the checkpoint systems from Xanathar's Guide to Everything for experience and treasure points for uh, the, that's in that book as well. Now, the experience point checkpoint system, I actually don't mind. I actually kind of like that change because as a DM, in my home games, I like to use uh, milestone advancements. So, when the players achieve a certain goal in the story, I like to reward them by giving them a level. Uh, the way that the experience point checkpoint system works, or the experience checkpoints, is that for every hour of play that the adventure is intended to take up, uh, you get one checkpoint. Uh, you need to get four checkpoints to advance from levels uh, one, two, three, and, and into four, and then from you know uh, going from fourth to fifth and beyond, you need eight checkpoints. So for every eight hours of play beyond fourth level you gain another level. And again, that's the intended adventure length. So if you run a two hour adventure, for example, and it ends up taking three or four hours, then you're only going to get the rewards as if you had uh, played the two hours because that's what the adventure was intended for. On the other side, if you're playing a four hour adventure and you manage to finish it in two, then you still get the full four checkpoints. So like I said, that system I actually kind of like uh, because it eliminates the situation where you're, you know, like 50 experience points shy of gaining a level at the end of a long, grueling adventure. So it's one of those things where you can kind of get, uh, you feel the, the rewards a bit more reasonably than it's like, crap, I'm like this shy of gaining a level. So that change I actually kind of like. What I don't like is the treasure point system. So the way that the treasure point system works is that you get one point for every um, hour of gameplay, similar to the experience checkpoints. And you can purchase items, uh, magic items, by spending X number of points on them. I think it's like four points for um, tier one stuff, and it, it goes up. There's there's a whole chart for it. The problem that I kind of have with that is <clears throat> that it means that items that you pick up uh, in adventures don't necessarily carry over. At least that's the impression that I'm getting from people that are have been talking about it. And uh, it's just not a system that I like. Um, one of the things that I was really happy with when it came to 5th edition was that it seemed to once again put an emphasis on finding magic items and making the discovery of a magic item feel important. And that was a part of the game that I really genuinely liked. It's something that I think, you know, flows well. I, I just, you know, I like the idea of the player characters finding stuff along the way and not just being able to you know, fully, like, customize and, and overpower themselves with these combination of items that they choose for themselves. The magic checkpoint system essentially reopens the magic mall, which is something that I'm just not a big fan of personally. And I know that with 3rd edition, for example, 3rd edition was really bad for this, where everyone built their characters specifically around the magic items that they needed for their character to be the most effective. So the combination of like weapons and weapon abilities, armor, miscellaneous items. And I, I just, I really couldn't stand that. It was one of those things that I really, really just hated about that version of the game. And, you know, going to cities, buying up expensive magic items, you know, hoarding the ones that they found just so they could trade them in for other stuff. And it made the discovery of like a magic weapon seem almost meaningless. You know, it's like, oh, okay, well, that's cool. You know, I've got this, you know, plus one sword or plus two sword that I can essentially dump off so I can add, you know, an extra ability to the weapon I already have. So, I just, I feel that with the treasure point system that that's kind of the way that we're going again. And that players are going to, when they're designing their characters, instead of just worrying about what they're going to take at the various levels, they're now also going to be building their characters around these specific magic items that you know they need to make their character effective. And I just, I'm not a huge fan of that. It's one of those things that just really kind of turns me off of uh, up the system in general. It's one of the biggest gripes that I had with 3rd edition, one of the biggest reasons why I really don't want to run 3rd edition again anytime soon, if ever. 
Now, I understand the reason why they've done this, uh, and it was something that was sort of discussed at the uh, the last D&D game that I ran. Uh, it was actually first edition a D&D game, but the, the subject came up. And uh, the, the fact is that you had uh, dungeon masters who were building up all of their accumulated experience uh, points, creating a high-level character with no magic gear, going into tournaments, and by default, because they had the fewest m amount of items, were gaining all of these, like, you know, um, convention-exclusive items or, or things of that nature. So I understand that, you know, there are people that were out there sort of abusing things in order to... Um, in order to, to get those types of items, but I think there are better ways of fixing that issue than um, just simply changing the whole like system altogether. Uh, for example, you could have it so that, you know, um, well, and, and another one of the things that the characters, the DMs were doing, I guess I should just throw that in there as well, is that they were actually taking the items and trading it to other characters. So they were getting these high level items and then trading it to lower level characters. So the first thing that you can do, which I think would be really, really simple, is just get rid of the magic item trade system altogether. Um, you know, so if your character takes an item, it's that character's item. Uh, and the only way that that's going to change might maybe through character death. But even then, just stop letting people freely trade items, especially between their own characters. You know, I, I just feel like that's such an abuse of the system that I would never personally allow it. If you have two different characters, they have to obtain their items separately. And just, you know, having a higher level character going through and finding magic items that they just pass down to their lower, lower level characters is not something that I personally like. I mean, yes, you have to spend downtime to do it for both the characters, but that's not really a hindrance. So the, the simplest thing is just, you know, uh, trade between uh, the same player's characters, multiple characters, could just be prohibited. Uh, you could also rule that convention-specific items cannot be traded, period. So if you've got someone going to a gaming convention with a, you know, 18th level character with no gear on them, and they get this really powerful, you know, magic item that's specifically designed as a reward for going to that convention, then they can't trade it. It's, it's a convention-specific thing, you get a certificate that has your name printed on it, and it's non-exchangeable. It's a pretty simple solution. Another thing would be to simply reward everyone who goes to those uh, games with a magic item, with the same magic item. Now that might be a little bit overpowered, but if you combine it with the fact that you can't trade convention specific items, then it sort of eliminates that problem. And if there's no real benefit, um, like if they can't get this powerful item as a you know fourth tier character and trade it to their first tier character, you're probably going to see some of those abuses disappear. You could also have something where, for example, um, the, if someone shows up with a high-level character with absolutely no magical gear on them, then you could simply rule that, you know, the, um, the system where the players with the lowest items, if there's uh, multiple bids for an item, uh, automatically get it. You could just simply throw that out the window and basically say, well, your character has gone this far without magic items, so why would that change now? and basically have it be a punishment. If someone's clearly trying to abuse the system, don't allow them to abuse it. Just simply say, no, uh, you show up with a fourth tier character that just appeared out of nowhere using your accumulated DM experience with absolutely no items on them, you're not getting the items from this convention. And, and have that be that. Um, so I've really decided that, personally, I don't really want to run this system anymore. And uh, it's something that I've been kind of thinking about for a while. Like the the D and D Adventures League game that I've been running at Giant Robot, I've been slowly moving more towards a homebrew to begin with. Um, the biggest reason for that was uh, it started off with me just wanting to allow players to make characters of a similar level if something happens to their current ones, rather than forcing them to use a proxy character or start over with a brand new first level character. As so I'm running Tomb of Annihilation. And in Tomb of Annihilation, if your character dies, that's it. Like, there's no way to resurrect them until you get to the end of the uh, end of the adventure, end of the campaign. Um, and with this new changes to like the magic item system, uh, I'm just not interested. So the the other issue is is that there's really no noticeable benefit uh, for the store or for the players to be you know taking part in 
D&D Adventures League. With the old RPGA, there used to be, like, you, you'd earn reward points um, sort of thing that you could trade in and you could get stuff uh, just for being a member of the RPGA and, uh, uh, you know, going to and playing games. There's none of that for D&D Adventures League. The stores have to pay for the adventures to run for the Adventures League, so they don't even get the benefit of getting free download codes for their adventures. Now, there are, like, major events that they might get free stuff for, but just for the regular, you know, week-to-week -week Adventures League, the store gets nothing from it, and the players get nothing from it. Like, there's no player reward system where if you log so many hours of organized play that Wizards of the Coast, you know, sends out, like, um, you know, something to the store that the, the players could get. Like a, you know, a, an, like a card that allows you to, you know, pass it in to automatically stabilize and regain X number of hit points, for example. Or to, you know, trade in a card to be able to re-roll a failed saving throw or a failed attack roll or, you know, have a card that you can trade in to do a specific thing on a critical hit. There's just nothing. There's absolutely no real tangible benefits. Uh, I talked to the store owner and he basically said that there's really nothing that they would gain um, from doing the D&D Adventures League. So, you know, most of the benefits that they get from Wizards of the Coast comes from them running magic events. And magic has a much better support system for the, uh, the players in that organized play than D&D Adventures League does. So, um, basically I'm dropping D&D Adventures League. I'm still going to be running 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons out of Giant Robot once a month. Uh, but it's going to be, you know, my own game. It's, it's, I'm not going to have to worry about, um, you know, log sheets or, you know, things like that that, again, really don't have any major benefit. Um, you know, I talk to my players and they're okay, you know, for the most part, they're okay with it. Um, and, you know, if they want to have a version of their character that they can use in other games, they just fill out a separate sheet. But I'm, I'm kind of done with Adventures League at this point. It's just no longer something that I feel like I'm going to enjoy running. I just, like, so with the magic item system that they're going to be coming out with now, uh, I just don't like it. You know, I don't like the idea of the, the players having complete and total control over the items that they get and having it items that you get through the adventure basically not carry forward or just, you know, kind of fizzle out altogether unless the players can spend the points on them right, right then and there. So, Anyway, that's sort of my thoughts on the changes to D&D Adventures League, but let me know in the comments below what you guys think. Uh, as players or as DMs, are you excited for the changes? Are you looking forward to the checkpoint system? Or is it something that, you know, kind of has you reconsidering things? Like, I know um, the, there's a Saturday group that I have gone to as a player, and a lot of the people aren't very keen on the changes themselves. So it might be interesting to see how many other places are affected by this. But let me know in the comments below what you guys think. And uh, I look forward to hearing from you know any of any and all of your feedback. So thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you next time. Take care.